Hey, good morning to everybody. Happy Sunday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early. It's 5.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Uh, for those of you that don't watch my channel, there'll probably be more people that watch that, that will see this video that aren't familiar with me. Uh, I don't usually, I was in the middle of my workout. I already downloaded a video this morning. And this story about Aaron Carter, I, I found out about six hours ago, uh, you know, sometime around 1 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. And, uh, you know, it's been, it's been bothering me. It's been bouncing around in my head. Uh, I don't know a lot about Aaron Carter. Uh, you know, he's a good over 20 years younger than me. I'm not very familiar with him, but you know, for those of you that don't know me, I am a recovering addict. Uh, I was, I had a hardcore addiction for two decades to heroin and crack cocaine, and I've been completely clean and sober. I've talked about this in other videos. Uh, the thing that saved me personally, the, the I, I was in and out of detoxes over 13 times, and uh, finally methadone maintenance, uh, medically assisted treatment, was the thing that saved my life. But that's not what this video is about. Yeah, the more I've been thinking about, you know, I wasn't planning on doing this video. Uh, the thing that pops into my head, most of all, is there but for the grace of God go I. You know, that, that would, uh, you know, I, I don't want to speculate here. You know, I was, I wanted to talk about this because there's, there's glaring similarities to me. And some things that just seem too obvious to me. You know, they, they, of course, this just happened last night. I don't want to come on here and, and insinuate this or that. But I, I, you know, I tried just putting it in the back of my mind, and it's, it's not working. Um, suffice it to say that most 34-year-old guys don't uh, drown in, in their own bathtub. I'll say that first of all. You know, there's no, it's going to take a while for the medical examiner, like I said. Now, I, I don't want to say anything bad or speculate, but uh, it came to mind the similarities. There's a, I'll have a link down below, a whole list of other celebrities, and these are just celebrities, not to mention probably hundreds or thousands of people across the United States that have passed away in a bathtub like this. But Whitney Houston, uh, uh, due to a combination of drugs and drowning in a bathtub. Whitney Houston's daughter, Bo uh, what was it Bob, Bobby? Uh, same thing, a combination of drugs and drowning in a bathtub. Judy Garland, uh, Wizard of Oz, you know, uh, Dorothy. She, uh, it was uh, drowning in a bathtub and barbiturates, I believe it was. Uh, Jim Morrison. I think it was listed as congestive heart failure. There's four right there that passed away in a bathtub. And for the most part, it had to do with, with drugs too. Let me, let me say, let me, let me say this. Uh, I'll have a couple links down below uh, about Aaron Carter. I didn't know this, you know, that he was battling to stay in recovery. I know how, how hard recovery is. Uh, relapse is part of recovery. It really is. Uh, you know, it, it, for most people, it, it takes, a, most people will relapse. It takes several tries. Um, there's a few things that stuck out. Uh, there's a report, the link's down below, that three days before, like just last week, he was pulled over, for, pulled over by the police for suspe suspicion of driving while under the influence. Now, he wasn't charged here. That kind of, I, I could understand that too, because uh, I'm familiar with opiates and, uh, when you're under the influence of opiates, a lot of times you, you do this thing called nodding out, where you go into this like dreamlike trance. Uh, this is the thing that opiate addicts will, will gush about, uh, about feeling like all oh, their their worries and everything is gone, and they're just floating, and that it's better than an orgasm. This is this is what they're talking about, and it usually happens. You know, you nod out when you're sedentary, when you're sitting in one place, like watching TV, driving a car. Back when I was using, I'm embarrassed, I'm ashamed to say this, but it happened frequently while I was driving. You know, all of a sudden, I, I, my head would be down to my chest, and I, I'd jump up, and I'd be headed for a, a, a telephone pole. And I'd you know, slap myself in the face and, you know, and try to straighten up, and it, it would happen again and again. Like I said, I'm, I'm ashamed of saying that, but it, it's the truth. You can... You know, if something jolts you awake, you can, you know, your eyes will pop open and you'll be awake like if you're walking down the street. If you're talking to a policeman, you know, you could pop out of that trance, that trance like that, that nod. 
it, the nod usually happens when you're, like I said, in a sedentary type position, like in a bathtub or driving a car. You know, so this, this honestly, like I said, I'm not trying to insinuate anything here, but it sound, the story sounds very familiar to me. Um, you know, I, 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 I pray, you know, I, I, I pray for him and his family, for Aaron Carter and his family. Um, like I said, I'm not trying to insinuate anything here, but more than likely, I see a lot of similarities. That's, that's I'll just leave it right there. Um, like I was saying about the policeman, he was let go three days or three or four days ago um, when he passed a sobriety test. Now, I don't know what kind of sobriety test they give you. You know, but obviously, if you're under the use of, of opiates, you know, you'll pass a breathalyzer. You, you can straighten up quick. And, and you know, to, to some untrained police, they might not be able to spot the, the pupils or whatever. And I could see how uh, it could be possible for somebody under the influence of opiates to, to let, to, for a cop to let them get back in the car and drive away without realizing how under the influence they are. Um, I don't know. I don't know, I'm not a policeman myself, but I could see how somebody under the influence could snap to for long enough to, to make an impression to a policeman. Um, I, like I said, I'll have a list down below with uh, all the people that have passed away in bathtubs. And um, like I said, I, I just, I, it's a sad story. It, it's a sad story no matter which way you look at it. If it was a natural death, I mean, it's still sad. If it was related to opiates or drugs in any way, um, it's another in thousands that are happening across this country this year and hundreds that are happening every, hundreds or thousands that are happening every day across this country with uh, some of these, these uh, opiates that are way stronger than the stuff I was taking 16 years ago. Than the, it's way stronger, 50 times stronger than the heroin I was using 16 years ago. So uh, just some thoughts here, but the story bothers me. It does. Uh, you know, somebody in recovery, the bathtub, uh, being pulled over, being in recovery, having, having issues with staying in recovery, being pulled over for uh, the suspicion of uh, driving under the influence, the bathtub, uh, all of it. Uh, if it walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, it's usually a duck. All right, you guys have a good Sunday.